So, how are the new defenses coming along? Coming along nicely, though I do have some questions about a few things in the plants. Is it the... is it about the heads on the pikes? No, oh, no, that's fine. That's surprisingly standard here on the rim. No, we are concerned about your backup plan if this fails. <laughs> no, it's not gonna fail. These walls are double layered, made of the strongest granite with uranium turrets for the best durability. <laughs> well, that's another construction company we can't do business with again. But yes, defense is one of the most important things out on the rim alongside food, water, and tables. Without a good defense, you are sure to fall to the horrors on the rim. Or just the Madden Thrumbo who d you decided wouldn't be a problem but did it anyway. I didn't flub those words at all. Yeah, we're fine. <clears throat> Today's episode is going to be a guide on building kill boxes. Granted, it won't be how to actually construct them, as different regions map spawning, differing from person to person, and so on and on and on. This is more of a broad guide on how to make sure your kill box is efficient and cost effective, because not everyone is going to have a cheat mod that lets you get all the resources you want. This guide will assume base game or normal quality of life mods at an average difficulty. Yes. As always, remember to like like, subscribe, and of course let us know of anything we miss because hey, my writer isn't the brightest person and always seems to miss at least something. <laughs> I kid, I kid, you are a good writer. But you do seem to forget things in our videos. For every like we get on this video, that's one extra minute you have in between raids. So, those not in the know of terminology, Killbox is described as a location where you funnel enemies into a trapped area where you can focus fire on them before they get you. In layman's terms, big open area where enemies come in and bodies come out. So why should you use Killboxes? Well, pretty much, it's one of the better ways to deal with multiple opponents early on. You don't need to have a Killbox, as if you kill a couple of guys, they will all run off as per the mechanics of the game, but there comes a point in the game where you will be overrun, starting with one enemy, four colonists to two raiders for every colonist, and so on and on and on. You will be overrun, that is a fact of life here on the rim. With killboxes, you will be able to even the playing field. So first off, location. Depending on the location, you might have a few more options, though for the best colony locations to build a killbox without having to invest a lot more time and resources into it. Is a temperate forest, large hills, or mountainous zone for two key reasons. Lots of stone and lots of wood. And the wood will come into play right about now, traps. Lots of wooden traps. Why? Why wood? Because it's plentiful and easy to set up. Yes, metal and stone do more damage, but it takes a lot longer to build. And when you are replacing a lot of traps, every second spent on that could be spent doing other important tasks. If you got the resources or a mod like Quarry, 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 maybe I said it wrong. Let me know in the comments down below. Maybe you could justify using stone, but I don't recommend doing that. You want to keep your stone and metal for other projects, especially walls, because trust me, you will be doing a lot of wall replacement. So why the traps? Well, before we make it to the main kill box, most people like to set up a trap halfway along narrow corridor with traps designed to either kill them before they arrive or just slow them down. How to make this is to set up a good looking snaking corridor and set each trap to be every other space. In between that, on the wall, set up a door, both to allow your pawns easy access to the traps to replace and make it through the hallway fast and safe. In between the traps, put sandbags or drop-off points for stone. This is so invaders can't stand on the spot and it slows them down, as they are forced to go up and over it. It'll separate the invaders too, so any who make it through are easier to pick off, one at a time rather than all at once. As the great Julius Caesar once said, divide and conquer. So divide the enemy up and conquer them. You want them to come into your kill box one at a time, so they are easier to pick off, hence why you want a proper trap hallway. Oh, and another thing. I don't recommend recommend explosive IEDs due to the cost to replace them, and the damage to your own buildings isn't worth the damage you could do to enemies. The only exception to the rule is the flame one, since if you got stone walls, the damage is minimal at best, and it causes a good amount of pain damage on a bunch of enemies in a crowded area. Another good option for this is the gas traps and shell mods, since the different gases can help out in weakening enemies before they show up into your killbox. Though you might want to set multiple of the same kind though, the hallways 
since it takes a while for the stuff to kick in. So your invaders got through the hallways. You took out, oh, around three out of the 30 of them. What now? The good news is that they're slowed down and coming in one at a time, and they just walked into a line of turrets and guns. How do you set up a kill box itself? First off, do you have embrasures or not? Because embrasures can change how you build a kill box. If you don't have a mod that allows it, then you want to have a standard kill box set up with one entrance coming in. You want an entrance like that so the enemies aren't bunched. Plus, with this example design, they are close enough to the action to think melee is a good idea. You also will notice how your pawns aren't bunched up. That's because you don't want bunched up pawns for rocket launchers or grenades. Trust me, it's not a fun time when three of your favorite pawns lost their legs because they decided to have a huddle. On another note, I'd include some turrets on each side of the walls to the side to both kill and distract the raiders, but this is an example kill box. Notice with this kill box design, the narrow hallway, you got a ton of invaders bunching up. Granted, it would be hilarious to have some rockets hit inside once they all come out. You are going to be swarmed. The best thing to do is spread them out. I should also mention the melee kill box where if you remember the earlier image of how to get invaders to come in, you may now notice the smaller entrance means less people can go into that area. Well, if you make it one block thick, only one person can walk in. Kind of see where it's going. You get one person with three melee defenders. Play your cards right and you can have three badass men guarding your way to your base. Ay, 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 ay. naturally give them the best armor shield belts and weaponry i suggest mono swords or plasma swords but any melee weapon can do in a pinch if you have all three in front they can hit the guy in front of them but they only can use one guy at a time making it easier to pick them off moving back to guns if you were to make the kill box turret based first check the range of the turrets you want to use i recommend keeping just on the edge where the turret can fire and where they come out any further in and the turrets will fire into the one block entrance and it can be hard for the shots to hit, usually wasting the bullets. Then put in the line, turret wall, block turret, wall, block. I say put a wall block in between each turret because when the turrets inevitably get destroyed and blow up, they won't set off a change reaction and take out all your turrets. Yeah, just like that. that that's gotta suck a lot. Oh, and put some sandbags in front of the turrets. Makes it harder for enemies to shoot at them. Now, if you have embrasures like the reinforced walls, you could set up a firing line with one open way and to allow enemies to come into your pawns. Line of fire. Even put turrets behind the embrasures. Keep in mind explosions though. Ooh, big boom. Now, on the other technicals, you want to keep an open door into your base because invaders will always take the path of least resistance. If there is no obvious open way in, it will be harder to lead people where you want them. So, come Contrary to what you might think, keeping the door open can be really helpful. Except during manhunting animal swarms. Might be smarter to keep the door shut for that one and let someone else handle it. Mm -hmm. So weapons. What should your pawns use? Honestly, go with whatever you feel like. Normal rules apply though. Lots of bullets for tribals since it's more about the numbers Bruh. than the armor. And single action shots with high power for those armor wearing raiders. Going for a mix usually is a good idea with some rocket launchers for when you need them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Effective. But of course, not every enemy is going to go into your kill box all the time. Some are a lot smarter and will take different approaches into your base. As the great Sun Tzu once said, do not repeat the tactics which have gained you one victory, but let your methods be regulated by the infinite variety of circumstances. Keep updating and upgrading your box and defenses, dismantle old turrets and upgrade them because things will get harder. Think like the engineer. Keep upgrading and moving your defenses. Design wise for kill boxes, really you can't go wrong with the standard box design. The key thing you should do is cut down any trees or take out any rocks or items that can be used as cover. Though one interesting design you might like is the hourglass design or pyramid one where it's narrow in the beginning and widens in the end. Seen here by Mr. Streamer. This design is good for both turrets and characters thanks to all the focus fire being in one narrow space. That's about it. That's about it for kill box design in general. Really any design can work so long as you follow the basic principles of design. Moving on to outside of the kill box you will want to put turrets behind every wall that leads to your base for two reasons. One, in the event of a bunch of raiders coming in from the air, you never know where they will land, so having turrets all over can help you. And two, the AI behavior. See, in the event of sappers, they will go for any stone or wall that doesn't have a turret nearby to dig into. It's how the game decides the safest course of action, so if you put these turrets up behind walls, they will ignore them preferring paths of least resistance, hence the open door. There are turrets, yes, but they also know it's the direct way into your base. Though you could always just download a mod like Turtle Friendly Raids or no sappers like my writer does.
but we are assuming you aren't dishonest turtle scum. You definitely should plan for failure of your kill box, so many people forget that it can get overrun or enemies just avoiding it through sapping or aerial attacks, a famous mythbuster once said. Failure is always an option. This really is the best advice a rimworld player can give another. Plan for when the walls come down or something goes wrong. So for a kill box, make more than one, so they have to go through multiple boxes of turrets before reaching your colonists. Turrets in the base to slow them down while you set up a defensive line. IDs within and outside of the box, so if they chase you, they get hit by them. I should also recommend the no expanded security for some of the turret variety and traps. The bear trap is a great reassembled trap that turrets doing more damage or being more durable than the base game turret. Shield barriers can be great for last stands, and with the rocket turrets able to accurately fire over walls could be a great early attack. The bobbed wire is also great for slowing enemies down and even doing a bit of damage that adds up. Really, to repeat my Yourself, slow down and divide the enemy makes things so much easier oh and if you decide to go into a mountain really don't do it because all you will do is unleash insects on yourself unless you have a mod to dismantle mountain ceiling tiles all you will do is give insect swarms a smorgasbord of food in the form of your now terrified colonists hopefully all of this was helpful to you all my writer definitely had fun writing this let us know of anything we might have missed out on the information wise or any mods that would be great to help with kill boxes anyways bren what do you got for me from reddit to meme on mm, me mom can we have meat no we already have meat at home meat at home <laughs> Yes, yes, the meat at home sucks. Yes, I agree, Brent. The meat at home does indeed suck. But you will be fine, Brent. You will be fine with the meat at home. I'd like to thank my patrons who support us, my writers and editors who suffer for all your enjoyment, and of course, viewers like you. Now watch another video so I can afford to buy more chinchillas.